Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome back, everyone. Today on the Produce Moms podcast, it is a total fangirl moment for me. I am welcoming Amy Lacey. She is the founder and chief innovation officer for Cali Flower Foods, the new white flower, also known as my absolute favorite cauliflower pizza crust. I always have at least a 10 stack in my freezer, and I just cannot wait to help share the story of this amazing product line as well as this amazing female entrepreneur and just, you know, total visionary and disruptor for the food industry. She has done so much to make cauliflower products accessible for the masses. So Amy, welcome to the Produce Moms podcast. Wow. Okay. So I've done about 22 podcasts this year and that is my favorite intro of all time. <laughs> no offense to my previous podcast because I love doing podcasts, but that was an incredible intro. So thank you. Aww. I'm honored to be here. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored to welcome you because like I said, I mean, girl, I love your product. <laughs> and, uh, I've been following you on LinkedIn and I've been buying your product for at least two years pretty consistently. Um, and I am, I am thrilled to bring you on to the Produce Moms podcast. And I think, I think a product like the cauliflower pizza crust that is truly a cauliflower pizza crust with actual cauliflower in it. Uh, I mean, the nutritionals of this product, folks, is it's this product is the supreme of all of the cauliflower crust pizzas on the market. And Amy, you have an incredible story as to how uh, you started this this brand, and it, and I want to hear that, and I want to. I want you to share that with our audience because I know it as someone who has fallen in love with your products and started to follow your entrepreneurial story. But please tell our listeners today about your story. What is your product line? How did you come up with this idea? Wow, sure. I love telling the story because, I mean, you've worked in the food industry in various aspects. You've worked with Kroger. You've worked with people like that. So you understand that a lot of food people, a lot of brands, they create innovation to launch food to go nationwide and grocery. And that is not at all what I did, but that is exactly what happened. I am not um, in the food industry. I'm, I'm a chef. I have a lot of people ask me if where I went to culinary school. I'm none of those things. I am a mom of three, been married for 23 years living a pretty good life. I had just turned 40. By the way, I'm almost 50. So this is like 10 years ago. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I got really sick. And my world was rocked. I mean, upside down. And I won't bore you with all of those details. But I will just tell you that I was diagnosed originally with connective tissue disorder. I struggled um, on all aspects of life, as far as being able to just function to walk, being able to, um, I, I ended up getting a pulmonary embolism. So immediately I was put on uh, a plethora of medicine, uh, steroids, which kept mm. me awake all night, yeah. <laughs> which makes you crazy when you don't have sleep. Plaquenil for the lupus, which um, basically has horrible side effects. Um, I was also put on um, a... Um, Besides steroids and Plaquenil, because I had the pulmonary embolism, I was put on warfarin, which is is not a great drug, but it is very necessary when you have a blood clot and the side effects are horrendous. But more importantly, just the quality of life. You have to go into the Coumadin clinic multiple times, and it's very difficult to get your INR between two and three. So all of that was happening to me, and it happened very fast. 
And I was, I probably had had the autoimmune for a long time. And sometimes you can test positive for it and not have active symptoms. Therefore, you don't actually have it. And so I think I went for a long time without having symptoms and, and not realizing it. And then I would get some symptoms, but I thought they were poisonous. I had poison elk because I had mm. rashes on my body and we were treating it with steroids, which mask the condition. So after a bout of depression and they put me on Wellbutrin as well, I decided I have three kids. I need to kick this in the pants. I did what a lot of people do when they're diagnosed with something. I went to the internet and I started researching ways to make food my medicine. And so I could get off of the medicines. And I decided to go grain-free, sugar-free after, you know, a lot of research and talking to some experts, I felt like I needed to eliminate those from my diet. And I realized that the grains and the sugar were causing so much inflammation that just removing those two things along with alcohol, which, you know, I didn't, wasn't a big drinker, but I like to socially have wine every once in a while. And so I eliminated all three of those and I realized that life was starting to become normal again. But one of the things I had done with my family was family fun night, which was consisted of our favorite food, which happened to be pizza. Mm-hmm and games or movies. And so I thought, well, my kids have been dealing with a very sick mom for nine months and I want to bring some normalcy back. So let me try to find a pizza that I can make that we can make as a family or my kids like to top the crust is what they like to do at that time and bring some normalcy back. So I went to the internet. I found the cauliflower pizza crust recipe, not the one we currently currently use today, but a healthy version of a cauliflower pizza crust recipe. And I made it and it was a complete disaster. Big old mess. I made it again, still a mess. Finally, when I got it down, I served it to my family and my oldest doesn't eat vegetables. He doesn't like vegetables. We've tried all kinds of things. I, I think I told you earlier when we talked, I use a cookbook where it teaches you how to sneak vegetables into different recipes. So I've done everything from sneaking spinach into his brownies to serving him the cauliflower pizza crust and he loved it. So I knew it was a good recipe right. and I ended up. Kid approved. I mean, that's, that's like yeah, the best. Kid approved. <laughs> that is the best accolade in food right there. <laughs> kid approved. And yeah. I tell this story a lot and I always tell people cauliflower wasn't even a vegetable I had in my refrigerator. It wasn't one that I bought, but it was what the recipe called for. And I've since fell in love with the vegetable and we use it for so many different things because it is bland. It's high in vitamin C, it's antioxidant, it's amazing vegetable, but it's so bland that it takes on whatever flavors you put with it. Mm -hmm. So I loved bringing back family fun night again. Mm -hmm. And a, a friend of mine encouraged me Um, she's actually a health coach, encouraged me to take the product to farmer's market. So we took the farm to the product to farmer's market together and it was just going to be a fun side business that my kids helped me with. And when was this Amy in your journey? Like when was it that you actually perfected the recipe at home and then made that transition to the farmer's market? What year approximately? So this was, we started playing with the recipe in about 2014, but we took it to farmer's market in 2016. Right. So, so, I mean, I would say you're definitely an early adopter and disruptor because while there are way more cauliflower products on market today in 2016, you weren't seeing that. So you didn't, all you saw at the grocery store was the heads of cauliflower. There wasn't cauliflower rice. There wasn't, you know, Trader Joe's gnocchi or any of those. None none of that was in the market. There was one other veggie pizza on the market that used cauliflower and they're still on the market today. And they actually have renamed themselves uh, cauliflower pizza crust. I -hmm. won't say their name, but they're, they're out there. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, there was nobody else. So we took it to farmer's market. It was fun. Then 
it started to become demanding. We started having requests. I started getting phone calls at home for people placing orders before farmer's market. Well, yeah. And we people like me that out. want that tin stack in their freezer at all times, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, and this is just a little, little farmer's market in Northern California in Chico, California, where our company started, where Amazing. I was born and raised. Amazing. And so we had a, a local market pick it up and I thought, okay, there was a lot of things happening during this time. I mean, it was, I had a cottage license. I then rented an industrial kitchen. We did the whole food safety thing. We did a lot to prep for this particular moment where it went into grocery store and it just was a couple little local stores. And I really started to research what it takes to go into more grocery stores. And I realized, you know, I don't, the proof of concept in this product is, is great. We're in Northern California. People tend to love yeah. those kind of products here. Farmer's market is great. There's forward thinking people in Chico, California. You know, a lot of great products have started there like Sierra Nevada Brewery and, and places like that. But I wasn't sure if it would sustain through grocery and it's a lot of money. So I thought, okay, I've dabbled in e-commerce before. I had a stay when my kids were really little Mm -hmm. before I got sick, I had a um, clothing store that I did online and it was, it was for fun money and it was pretty successful. And so I thought I can try this product. I'll, I'll put it out online and we'll do some marketing tips that I learned at a course that I took called story brand, Donald Miller course called story brand. I highly recommend it. If you haven't listened to his podcast, uh, listen to it. He has some great tips on building businesses and his main, the main premise is making your customer the hero. And I thought, okay, we have quite a few customer testimonials from farmer's market, from health coaching, things like that. Uh, the girl that I took the product with uh, to farmer's market was a health coach. And of course I was paying it forward as well as a health coach by now because I had gotten myself healthy and by now I'm off all my medication wow. and I'm feeling really good. And I had lost about 45 pounds in the process and I had gained quite a bit of weight um, when I wasn't, when I wasn't mobile and I, sure. and I had gone through a pretty big depression. Yeah. So paying it forward. So we just started sharing our customers, our different clients testimonials online and the product the, the stories went viral and the product sell, started selling like crazy. In January of 2017, we sold more online than we had the entire year of 2016. So we started making our product an e-commerce product. And right away, we developed a fan base. And that fan base said, hey, we want a true plant-based cauliflower pizza crust without dairy. So that was our next SKU that we created, just listening to our customers. Mm -hmm. Their original recipe had almond flour in it. We had people with nut allergies, so we reformulated. I mean, the great thing about being online and having customers like yourself is that we get that immediate feedback and you don't have that in grocery. So I was right. sticking and with online. And you don't online. really have to like, you don't have to go through the process of like investing in a consumer focus group because each and every day you're you're operating a consumer focus group when you're, since you're selling and communicating directly with the end consumer and household. 100%. Yes. Yeah. And we, we really understood our customer and we had two different distinct customers. And one of those we appealed to greatly on Instagram, mm -hmm. which we started March of 2017. And I will admit, I had no idea about Instagram <laughs> until we launched it for Cauliflower Foods. And now I love my own personal Instagram. I love talking to people on Instagram. And of course, yeah. we had a huge consumer base on Facebook as well. And we continued to groom that and, and just really mm -hmm. listen to our customer. And so 2017 was a handful of grocery stores, but primarily e-commerce all the way. And it became a huge, serious business. Right. It literally overnight exploded. And so that required me to become a CEO. So I've been the CEO of my family, like all moms are pretty much, right. but I had never been a CEO in a company. I never had run a company that became a seven figure business. I 
had only done innovation in my home and I learned a lot. We made a lot of mistakes, but we learned a lot. And I surrounded myself with people that were humble, hungry, and had emotional intelligence. And those were really the people I hired. They were my friends. They are my friends. Um, They were people that I knew in the local area. And we just continued to really grow those relationships and made our business a relationship building business. And every day when there, I mean, there were times where I was like, why am I doing this? This just like happened to me. I have three kids. I have my health back. I want to, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't want to spend 10 hours a day doing this, but then I would get a letter from a diabetic that could eat pizza again, or somebody that had my condition only 10 times worse than me and thanked me for creating this product. I mean, the stories are endless and they kept me going and they keep me going and they keep the team going. And it's amazing. It's been such a blessing and such a journey and so unexpected. But by the end of 2017, it exploded. There were so many people coming out with products. I mean, everything from Trader Joe's to Oprah to all kinds of products coming out. And I realized our, the one thing I always remained was using very clean ingredients, simple ingredients, using the whole head of cauliflower. So we didn't waste product with the stems and leaves. We use those as well. Mm -hmm. And just keeping it as simple as possible. Literally one of our pizza products is cauliflower, mozzarella cheese, and eggs. That's it. Nothing else in it. And I've, got it in seasonal my, I've got that basic one in my refri- or my freezer. <laughs> so yeah. Um, That's my favorite to make a too. dessert crust or whatever. And then having fresh vegetables, you know, our manufacturing plant is in the Bay area and we're near mm-hmm. all of the cauliflower farms, which is amazing. Right. But we realized that we could take our process our proprietary process that makes our crust and we could infuse other vegetables. So then we created our jalapeno. Well, first Mm -hmm. we created the red pepper, the sweet red bell pepper. And then we created the jalapeno, which is now my favorite, the jalapeno. I'm a spicy person, but I love the the process that we use and we infuse those flavors in there. We use the real vegetables and there's no powdered cauliflower. There's no pureed cauliflower from China. It's grown right here in California in California. U.S. and it's, you know, literally farm to table, so to speak, because we cut it from our farms and it goes right into our manufacturing plant. I love that. It's been amazing. Cali, Cali flower foods, uh, the new white flower. It's uh, what a story this is. And I will say I was, I was part of that uh, e-commerce consumer. I found, I found you because I looked it up in preparation for this conversation, it was through your Facebook ads that you were doing in January, 2018. And you popped up in my Facebook feed and I was like, man, I need to try this product. And you know, there's no better time of year to make those healthy swaps than the start of a new year. And, um, yeah, I've been a, I've been a pretty, uh, passionate fan and consumer ever since. Uh, it, it, for anyone listening today, do not hesitate to try this product. Um, I've tried, as you can imagine, I've tried pretty much every cauliflower crust pizza on the market. And, uh, this one's the best, which is why Amy's on the show today. Um, because I'm such a fan of everything that she's created. I've tried, I think I've tried every single one of your product lines that you've introduced, every flavor of your crust and, uh, they're, everything's phenomenal. So, uh, it's a great story. Appreciate that so much. You know, it's interesting you say January of 2018. That was our biggest, well, January of 2019 was our biggest month. But January of 2018 was a game changer for us because we grew so fast in January of 2018 that I didn't realize it could even be possible what we could do. And so that month, that year, we became a family with our co-packer, literally. Mm -hmm. He was a baker. He had a 26-year bakery, a family bakery that did cookies. And we had a gluten-free section of the bakery where we would not cross over his ingredients with ours. And that January, we, we grew so fast, so quickly that he moved his family bakery of 26 years to Southern California for his sister to run And we became not partners, but a family. 
and they're still with me today. We're, we're one company now, but it was an amazing journey. And he rode that wave with us. And we learned a lot in January of 2018. And one of them was the potential, what our potential could possibly be. And I realized we can do so much more than the current SKUs that we have. We can do flatbreads. We can make them smaller. We can do so much. We can make lasagna. We can make, you know, all different kinds of flavors. And we had had a lot of requests for recipes. And we started in January of 2018, putting recipe cards in our boxes. Mm -hmm. So if you're a fan of ours and you've ordered online, you chances are you've received a recipe. Yes. And we kept getting requests for a cookbook. So we started writing a cookbook in January of 2018 along with launching new products. And we launched that cookbook this year, January of this year, and it went national bestseller. But I took about 150 recipes using the vegetable cauliflower and all the ways that I've been eating over the last probably eight to 10 years now, changing the way I'm eating so that I could eliminate inflammation. And a lot of those have been with cauliflower. So we put them in a cookbook and it, that's, also been an amazing journey. If you don't have the cookbook, I need to send it to you. Well, I don't yet, but I'm going to, I'm getting that. Don't you worry, Amy. I'm getting that cookbook. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll take a signed copy if you're offering. Um, <laughs> I will send it to you. I definitely will. So for our listeners, where do they, where do they go to find this cookbook? What's the name of it? How can they, how can yeah. they get it? So it's called Cauliflower Kitchen and it's sold everywhere where books are sold. And when it came out in January of this year, 2019, so if, you know, this podcast might come out in 2020, but it came out in January of 2019, it became, immediately became a national bestseller and we made the Barnes and Noble list and several lists and then we went international so it's in Barnes and Noble, it's on Amazon, it's in That's Kroger, great. it's it's all over the place. So oh, it's it's a that. great cookbook. That's great. Good. I can't wait. I can't wait for my signed copy. <laughs> It's coming. It's All coming right. your way. <laughs> All right. No, this is, uh, I tell us more about, I mean, I think it's kind of come out like you, I feel like as you're talking, Amy, like, yes, you are, you're making a food product, but it's really so much more than that. I mean, these stories that you get from your, your in consumers, I mean, you really have created something that's capitalizing on one of my very favorite things, something that motivates me to do what we do at the produce moms each and every day. And that is the fact that food is culture. You are empowering people regardless of any ailments that they might have or dietary restrictions. You're empowering folks to maintain the cultural component of food, which is the essence of life in so many ways. You know, we talk about it all the time on this podcast and anytime I do media, it's one of my absolute favorite things about food. It's like how we celebrate life, um, all the highs and lows and so tell us a little bit more. Let's pivot to talk a little bit more about that emotional purpose or the mission behind the work that you do at Cauliflower. Yeah, so you're so right. I mean, I think back on my childhood and how my mom was a single mom and how I was raised and what I ate. And I had no nutritional background going into this. So it doesn't surprise me that eventually I got sick. I I was the mom that was probably not really looking at the back of the box that I bought in the grocery store. Matter of fact, I know I wasn't. I didn't realize a lot of what we were putting in our food in this country versus other countries. And so when I did get sick and food was my medicine, I really started reading the labels and looking at, you know, I didn't even realize that high fructose corn syrup, if I can even say that correctly, um, <laughs> was that bad for you, you know, yeah. 10 years ago, I just, I didn't pay attention. And so when I did get sick, it was an eye opener. And I think what I love about providing comfort foods and reinventing them so that they're healthier is that hopefully I can prevent people from getting sick. But then people that are already sick that feel compelled to write to me and I get those letters every day, it's, it's so refreshing. It's what keeps me going. It keeps me wanting to create more and more products. And I'm excited for the future. But 
I want to take comfort foods because I grew up with comfort foods. Like I, my mom used to feed me white rice cereal with milk, sugar, and cinnamon. Mm. Rice is one of those things I really struggle with, white rice. And mm-hmm. I love sushi. I love to eat sushi. So that's something I've had to change. I can't have the white rice and the sushi rolls or the poke bowls. So just taking the comfort foods of like lasagna and reinventing those so that people can enjoy them again. And right. I think it's really important that healthy food, I mean, you know, five years ago, there was a lot of new healthy food coming out, but it didn't taste good. Mm-hmm. So I think healthy food has to taste as good as it makes you feel. And that is our mission statement. And I truly believe that like it has to taste good. It has to be clean, healthy, but it still has to taste good or people aren't going to to want to eat it. And so that was my mission. Like, let's take comfort foods. We take our flatbreads. We make tacos out of them. I love Mexican food, but Mexican food does not love me. So I love taking our flatbreads and making them into taco shells. I love taking them and making them into like many little um, enchiladas and things like that. And so it's easy to do that. Once you start looking at what that comfort food is and how people enjoy it, it's pretty easy to swap it out. It's not so easy to make it taste good because you want it to taste like pizza or you want it to taste like lasagna. You want it to taste like Mexican food. And so that's where I I put a lot of energy into is, yes, it's got to have clean, fresh ingredients, but it's also got to taste really good. And it's got to remind you of of something. It's got to remind right. you of that pizza you love to eat or yeah. like I said, that Mexican food or that the emotional, bowl. the emotional connection with food. It's like everyone's first love is food, you know? Yeah. So, uh, no, Absolutely. I, yeah, I, uh, I love that about your mission and what motivates you. And like I said, I mean, I, I definitely can identify with that and the work that we're doing at the produce moms and, you know, um, we're, we're closing in on our time here, Amy, but just a couple things that I want to, you know, kind of get your perspective on, like how important is the fresh produce industry to cauliflower foods? And how does, how does that motivate you knowing that your products are bringing more produce into people's lives? So, yeah, that motivates me big time, especially in the last two years when all these other cauliflower products have come out. It's like they saw a way to capitalize on it and they're coming out with pretzels and crackers and various products and they're using powdered or dehydrated or like I said, pureed coming even from China and they're having to add fillers to it to make it the product they want it to be. And we are no fillers. And so people will often ask me, why do they do that? Is that because it gets it crispier or, or why do they do that? No, it's because it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. It's cheap right? to get those ingredients and add some cornstarch or some fillers to it. It makes it cheaper. And the food industry is very much about, and I'm not talking about the farmers and I'm not talking about fresh fruits and vegetables, but I'm talking about some of these big, big name brands and I'm not going to say them. Sure. <laughs> Big companies, I encourage you, highly encourage you to read the labels and you'll see, you'll see things you can't pronounce. You'll see fillers and you'll wonder why. And that's why. So I love that we use fresh vegetables. We, um, we definitely, we use them to infuse the flavors. I love that we use the whole head of cauliflower. Funny story early on one day I went to our plant and I saw, um, a, a big, huge garbage bin and it had a bunch of stems and leaves. And I said to our co-packer, why are those in the garbage? And he said, well, because we don't use them in your product. And I said, I know, but I just assumed they went to like chickens and cows and stuff to eat. Like, why, why are we wasting that? That's like, that's part of the vegetable. And there's got to be an animal out there that will eat it. And he said, no, there's all these different regulations and laws. You can't just, nobody's going to take that. So we throw it out. And I said, oh no, we're going to go back to the, reinvention wheel and we're going to use the stems and leaves because I had already been eating the stem of a broccoli, you know, and cutting it and dipping it in dips and different things. And so yummy. It It is. And the cauliflower jacket too, which is the leaves of the cauliflower that delicious. 
it makes a great soup. There's all kinds of things you can do with it. So we went back to our proprietary process. We tried the stems and the leaves. It worked. We had to tweak a few things. It's amazing. It just adds more benefit and we don't have waste. I think it's really important to utilize vegetables and fruits in ways that you get creative in ways that you don't think that you can eat them. I love that. Oh, Amy, you're so inspirational. I love your story. I love what's, you know, your journey of bringing this incredible product to market, the the explosive growth that you've had. And I really think that it's in so many ways, you're just beginning, you know? So um, as we prepare to wrap up today's call, please tell our, tell all of our listeners today where they can go to purchase your products, uh, your website, or any retailers that you'd like to mention. And of course, any, any closing remarks that you might have. Yeah. So our products are all online at Cali, C-A-L-I, flower, F-L-O-U-R, foods.com. We're on amazon.com, but we're also in Walmart nationwide. We're in some Whole Foods stores, hopefully nationwide next year. We're in uh, many Safeways, Kroger, stores, King Supers. We're in grocery stores nationwide. And on our website, you can find out where we are and what grocery store in your area. If not, we're always running specials. Please join our email list because we are doing all kinds of specials on email, as well as offering recipes and other um, different kinds of uh, value added information. So join our email list and you can get those coupons as well. Yeah. And the book is sold everywhere where books are sold. The cookbook. Mm, So good. Amy, thank you so much. One quick piece of advice for those people that are just strolling through the grocery store, please take that extra minute to read the labels. They're really important because you might see, and I'll use some of my competitors in the cauliflower industry. It may say made with, real cauliflower, but look at the back ingredients and see what fillers are in there. And you'll know it's not with fresh cauliflower, but read the ingredients. It's so important because marketing, there isn't a lot of restrictions on marketing, so they can definitely trick you. And I'm not just talking about my competitors. There's some good brands out there that are my competitors too. So I definitely want to say that, that are using fresh cauliflower, but it's all across the grocery store. I mean, there's a reason why the obesity rate is so high in the U.S. You know, other countries have really stricter um, requirements on what they put in their food. That's one thing. And then from a female-owned women business entrepreneur now that never Mm -hmm. really plans on going that route, um, one of the things I get a lot of people asking me that are business owners, like, how did you do it? What's your best advice? If I can do it, anybody can. And I take, I took my mess and I made a message out of it. Mm -hmm. And we all have something that we can share with somebody that's going to make this world better. So don't live in fear. Don't be afraid. Go for it because your mess might be somebody else's message. So that's my advice there on the business front. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a produce mom in you because there's a produce mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time.